Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Fang Mei Luo from Tiffen University. Welcome to our lecture of introduction to counseling. Well, for those of you who are my students, I really miss you. How's everybody? For those of you I don't know you yet, or you are not my student, or you are my friends, how's everybody? Now, it's a period of time, it's a very strange time, right? The virus, coronavirus, they spread out the world. So, many places start to close and close and close, and we will require or we give, get the order say, stay home, stay home, stay home. Well, hopefully, even so, our heart remains open, okay? we won't able to survive if we think ourselves as a victim. We are not victim. We are not victim. We just have to be protect ourselves. Okay? And then we want to protect the world. Okay. So stay positive. Okay. So today actually I'm going to share with you a very interesting theory, counseling theory. It's called Reality slash choice theory. Reality slash choice theory. And you may wonder why this theory have two names together. I will sh share with you when we get there. Okay. But the founder of this one is called William Glasser. William Glasser. Okay. If you don't know him yet, you will know him. If you already know him, let's review. Okay, William Glasser. Okay, where is he from? Okay, I show the map of United States. Okay, then you see the point to the place actually from very close to many of us, right? Because Tiffin University is from Ohio. So see, this psychologist from Ohio. Okay, from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. Is anybody there? My audience, you from Cleveland, Ohio? Yay! Right? Okay. In 1925, okay, he is the, um, he was the youngest of three children. Youngest of three children, okay? And actually, just like many psychologists, he start to like to read and write from very young age, okay? Now, he finished his high school from Cleveland Heights High School. Is anybody graduate from the high school? Yeah, <laughs> right? If you are not, it's fine. That's his high school, right? In 1942, okay? So after he graduated from 1942, he went to where? Case Western Reserve University. Maybe many of you even live close there, right? Okay, so um, I just told you he's a psychiatrist and he's a psychologist. So you may think about he may be starting school with psychology or some kind of pre-made, right? No, he's graduated from chemical engineer major. So why? Well, I think a lot of parents think that chemical engineer major maybe can earn um, more money than psychology major, right? So that's why he didn't start with psychology. So he went to the chemical engineer, but tell you the truth, he not really like it. He made through actually in three years, and he also worked um, as an engineer uh, for a couple of years, but he, from his bottom, his heart, he said he didn't really like it. So he, his GPA not great during that time. Okay, so when he, he finally in 1946, okay, he decided to take the, uh, some psychologist class. He said, huh, even I didn't have a chance to learn it, and, but I feel like I maybe like it. Maybe I should take some classes first to see if I really like it. So he did it, and then he found, huh, it's really interesting. So he decided to continue. Well, now it's a time of World War II, you know, so World War II break, broke out, 
Okay, so he decided maybe he should join the army first. But actually, because when you join the army, they may give you some uh, scholarship pay for your school. So then that's why he kind of planned that he can use the money for, for a good usage. So then he joined the army. And after he discharged seven months later, he back to school. Okay, he back to school and then studied in their master degree of psychology. Well, different, really different from um, as a student in chemical engineer. He did, he didn't really do good in school because he's not that interesting. This time he's perfect. He's very good because there's something he really wanted, to do and he really devote his heart. So you can tell if people learn something they like compared with something they don't like. It makes difference, right? So he finished. Now, only one thing bothered him is the school actually emphasized so much about Freud. Okay, about Freud therapy, Freud theory. His point of view is, he know, you know, when people even finish the training, it's hard to do be a psych, psychoanalysis right away because they require many, many, many years of training, okay? So Glasser kind of say, his thinking is, well, if we get this master degree, we don't even able to practice a psychoanalysis. Why bother to spend that many years to get training in the area? Well, that's something bothered him, but he know as a student, he had to do whatever he has to do. So he arranged a little bit, adjust a little bit curriculum with his advisor, and then he get his degree in psychology. Okay, in master degree. Now, when he finished his master degree, you know, he want to get PhD. He want to get further education, but then he have struggled about where he should continue to pursue his dream, okay? His dream is he want to help him people in the first hand, okay? But he know actually as a psychologist, a psychologist, their job is to more like diagnosis, do evaluation, they do assessment. And he think about that's not really the way he want. So he decide maybe he should pursue a medical field. Well, when he applied for the medical school, you know, remember his GPA is not that great for undergraduate, right? So actually they become uh, a little bit obstacle for him, okay? So uh, he needed like try, fight hard to see if he can get a spot, okay? So he say, Fortunately, his outstanding performance uh, from his master degree of psychology got him an interview with Case Western uh, Reserve University. Okay, they say, well, even this part you not do great, but you are do so good in here. So they were willing to interview him, and then they admit him to the medical school in 1949. Okay, so then. Uh, he graduated in 1953 and he applied to the Veterans Administration Center in Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. So after he uh, internship, do his internship in 1954, okay. So then he started to work in, in the Brentwood Veterans Neuropsychiatric Hospital in Western. Uh, Los Angeles as a residence. Okay, so he start to work. And you know what happened this time? During this time, actually the medication, the medication they can use for the mental issue, mental health, the uh, trouble patients. They start to introduce medication. Well, that also bothered Glasser, <laughs> okay? Because um, he really, in his mind, mental illness, it's just because they are mentally not healthy, it's not necessarily mean um, you have trouble in your brain. 
So he start to feel uncomfortable when they start to talk about uh, the medication. Okay, they start to talk about medication. So actually, even through all his career, he really fight for this issue. You know, medication is a really uh, appropriate for the mental illness people. He fight for that. Okay, so now his trouble is here. That's I direct quote from his his uh, his book. Okay, so if uh, let me read for you, if you cannot see clearly, he say I don't really believe any of that stuff. And then when people, so he say he said to believe that when people say mental illness is path, pathological, he say no, they are not. And then when they say they are uh, mental illness, might be a problem for the brain. He said, no, he even fight back more. He said, if that was so, then what are we treating that? We don't do anything to their brains. We just talk to them. It's obviously that their brains are okay. It's how they're using them that's not okay. I want you to take a few seconds to think about this and read through it. I'll be right back. Okay, everybody have a chance to think about it. If you are glass or what's your position? Right? So uh you you can see then actually he has some trouble because of this point of view. Okay, he's kinda lonely, but he has his point. He said we just talked to them. We didn't really treat any brain. If you say their brain have trouble, then why don't we treat their brain? Right? Okay. So then after he graduate, okay, oh no, actually in his last year residency, he set up a, a outpatient clinic near the hospital, okay. Well, remember he against the medication, and then he against, you know, the uh, the point of view about psychopathic, right? And then um, he believe it's not a brain head problem, right? So, and then also. Um, he also not really that Freud, okay. And so this is pretty much whatever in that time, the mental hospital psychiatrists they are doing, and then everything they do, glasses say no, okay. So um, he opened a open a clinic close to the hospital, but you know what? They can supervise him. But they are not, they did not refer any patient to him. Well, how can you survive? Okay. So he he need to have a job, right? He need to have a job. So he found that actually from away from like 70 miles away from his 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 place. Okay. They have a school called Ventra School for Delinquent Girls, okay? And this part of the uh, California Youth uh, Authority, okay? They are looking for a psychiatrist. They are looking for a psychiatrist, but actually nobody apply. And of course, all the psychiatrists, they want to work in the hospital, right? Where white court looks my authority, right? Who want to go to the place? But he did. He said, well, if nobody go, I'm going. Okay, but anyway, he needs a job, right? So, um, and that school actually is total have about 400 female juvenile offenders between age 14 and 21. Okay, so actually he went there like once per week. And then the rest of the time he, he also, you know, work in the hospital, you know, for other uh, practice. Okay, so actually the first day when he arrived, he got impressed, okay? 
Why? When he get there, he saw a tall girl <coughs> screaming and cry. Of course, you know, when people were sent there, they said, I might not want to be here. So they are crying, screaming. And then he saw a housekeeper around 75 years old, okay, come and hold, uh, hugging and hold these girls. And then, you know, tell, you know, her very, um, soft voice say sweetheart what's wrong you know and then he say every girls here is actually very nice and they are uh, looking forward to to your arrival so you are welcome here wow surprisingly glasses see that this is working glasses say this is working remember he is from the at, 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 academic training right you have to do the medication right and you need a uh, treating the brain problem all this 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 well in here they, they do nothing about it and it is housekeeper and but just the soft voice and then you know the the, the caring heart it's calm this girl down so glasses get very good impression about this setting okay so in this trend is this setting actually he start to realize hey that relationship between a uh, client and the patient is so in between therapist and the patient is so important okay so now he start to work there you know like once per week okay for the from 1956 to 1967 how many years 11 years he went there once per week and then and then for the uh here then um he during this time okay he also passed his you know he finished his training and he passed his them in 1961 so during this time he already uh qualified to be a psychiatrist and you you see that you know, he went there, the, he say during these 11 years, the, uh, the first five years, he went there f once per week. And then next six years, he went there twice per week. Okay. And, but actually, this the place allow him and also give him the chance to create his theory. Okay. So sometimes if something not match with whatever you original, original want, don't get disappointed. Maybe that is a place mean for you mean to you maybe you will get something from there okay so anyway so then beside one or two days in this setting he also work other job right plastic or surgery and then others so he can survive i think we believe he need the money right okay so what happened during that place it's a lot of special thing he start to come out the idea okay over there Okay, he start to helping people to focus on now. To focus on now. Okay, and remember when we talk about humanistic, um, they talk about here now, but this not that that time. Okay, so in his time, he remember he got a training by Freud idea, right? So for him, focus on now actually is big deal. So he, he emphasized now rather than past and remember those people those kids those girls they have delinquent they are delinquent so they have some past experience is not good right so rather than just keep blame them for what happened what they did before glasses say that's focus on now what can you do now right and also they help them to focus on what do you want to do in the future rather than you know rather than what's your symptom okay so i think that it's very powerful right so that quite he start to people start to see the way he emphasized working and also another thing i think you may like this idea he emphasized no punishment no failure Remember that even they are for the delinquent, but they call school. So they have school work, right? And they they have to pass the work to get through, you know, that school. Well, you know, a lot of time 
those kids they may have trouble in school that's why they get in trouble in society in the community right so actually glasses start to use this principle so that means you won't fail and you don't pass and this you finish and and this you understand so for each course he, he didn't set up the time say when you need to pass when if you don't pass you fail no he just have them use their own path and then for them to walk through okay so that is very important uh, to encourage them to continue work okay so no bad attempt performance is you know was isn't so it mean bad exam performance is not penalized so if you're not doing good in school just keep working if you don't understand just keep trying okay so actually that also very important for class and later actually he he went to different school and then put this a uh, program into different school and find it's very success you know i hope we we have more school right now you working you working on this kind of program so for the kids you know they done in different path if they then stop they still feel success because every step is come every step is come right okay so that's very important for wear them glasses idea okay now because he kept he did very success in in that you know the girls school so actually uh the school district um super in, uh, inspector mary perry is very uh appreciate and very impressed about his work so actually um mary invite him to give a speech to share with the public what is what he what his idea okay and also this time he published his first book is mental health or mental illness so he started to challenge you remember he already have the idea he didn't really like that mental illness idea so he he write a book to 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 challenge this idea are they mental illness or are they mental health issue right what do you think about this it's, a, it's a very interesting right okay now remember when we introduced this this, this school we say it's called reality and slash choice let's talk about choice later but they talk about reality okay let me ask you a question why it is called reality let it be why why is it called reality what do you think you know some people tell me oh because their history is so real or something okay well it's very interesting to to her what what that name from okay so it's interesting like you know when remember he he have a clinic right and then you know people really hesitate to refer, re, refer the patient to him so then one time um one of his colleague a psychiatrist tell him say you know, I I I was going to refer a patient to you, but I thought you were too reality oriented uh, treatment for her. Okay, I really want to refer to you, but your treatment is too reality oriented for her. Glass kind of say, huh? What kind of excuse for this? What the mean? What is that mean reality oriented? What's that mean? Well, but that words actually stuck in his mind. So during that time, actually, he is prepared for give a speech to share his theory. Okay, so he thought, hmm, since the person used that reality words, maybe that can be a good name for my theory. Okay, so then in that presentation, actually, he introduced his theory as reality psychiatry <laughs> so it's sometimes it's interesting like when people tell you something they maybe use some words um, you know original you may kind of think strange but then later on you find hey that's a good name right okay and then so 
Later in October of that year, he was invited again to speak uh, at the British Columbia Correctional Association in Vancouver. And this time he changed a little bit. Remember before he called reality psychiatry, right now he called reality therapy. Okay, and then he emphasized his theory is help people effectively deal with the realities of their life. So right now he make his theory is more um, match with the net, right? And then uh, later his idea were organized into the book Reality Therapy and then, you know, published in 1965. Um, so then in 1967, the Institute of Reality Therapy was established, established and to teach the concept of reality counseling and the trend reality therapy profession. You know, so in up to this point, you know, kind of like reality therapy was really born, right? It's very, take a while, but it get there, right? Okay, now, remember we have a slash, reality therapy slash uh, choice theory, but actually choice theory, uh, in the beginning, it's not called choice theory, it's called control theory. Okay, the the reason um, to to have this theory slash, because even he create a reality therapy, but he keep thinking about, he didn't have any theory as a foundation. You know, he feel like the reality therapy is just kind of the, the skill the technique it's kind of like if you think about you take the train it's a train but train won't able to move without the train track and so for him that theory is a train track okay and so he kept thinking about he had he got a train now right choo choo train right he got a train now but he didn't have a train track so then in this time um he found the uh, a book come out uh, to the um, field. It's about control theory, about control theory. Okay, so um, he 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 kind of impression about. So a friend actually introduced him a book behavior uh, called the Control of uh, Perception by William Powers. So he so. He, he read it, okay, he read it. And then um, he even go and talk to the person and he said, oh, I think that's maybe a good idea. Maybe I can say reality, reality therapy slash control theory. Okay, so actually he, he used that, but many of his colleagues not really like that um, idea about control theory and also because the, the book this book actually not really easy to read okay so then uh, people feel like your reality therapy is very good but now you add that control theory there it's not really make your theory uh, better okay and also the control words somehow bother his colleague in his center, okay. So they they keep telling him, um, can you change? And so actually he changed uh, the writing for control theory, but then still people still bother. And of course, you know he said, let's give a try, let's give a try. And until actually 1996, he finally realized, ha, huh, actually. My point of view about helping people, it's not really mean control. Maybe you should emphasize more like choice. Okay, of course his control is not a bad idea. That's mean control. You feel in control your life. That's also important. But make them as a big name, as a part of the, the theory name, it's people feel like his colleague not really comfortable for that. So finally, you know, in 1996, he finally decided, okay, now I'm going to change and call that a choice theory. Okay, so actually choice theory, they emphasize, you know, 
we are the matter of choice. Everything you do is a matter of choice, right? For example, I decide to recall this video. It's a matter of my choice, right? I right now we all stay home, so actually I can choose to recall yesterday or today or tomorrow, or I can just say I'm not going to recall anything. You guys just read the PowerPoint. I can make a choice, and same thing for you. You can decide, huh? Maybe I should click the you to see what Doctor Ro going to talk about in this lecture or you can say I'm not going to watch your YouTube and I won't know right so but then if you open it if you turn on then now we see each other right so actually it's a matter of choice I also even tell people quite often we should thank you our parents they meet together and they decide to have a baby or they not decide but you come along anyway but they have to decide to be together right so that's it a matter of choice so i think the choice theory is somehow so okay so remember in the beginning i say why do you have react data p slash choice theory okay so then as they say um you like a trend and trend track okay so reality data p is a trend okay and then re choice theory is trend track so you need to have a tr trend track for trend to get through. So when when you practice, if you practice this school, then you use reality principle of reality therapy and then based on the theory of choice theory. Okay, and then actually in our another part of the uh, lecture, we I will share with you about what's reality therapy and what's choice theory. And please, don't skip, it's a very good one. And hopefully you I believe you will like it when you, when we get to the part of lecture. Okay, so um he continued work uh in this theory and he died in 2013, August 23, at the age of 82. Okay, now even he was he passed away, but then actually, uh, Doctor Robert, uh, Uputen, Uputen, okay, he also worked very hard to take to help him continue this reality therapy. Okay, so actually, the I I got a training from him. See, that's our picture. Our picture with him. I get to know know him and get to know his wife Sandy. They are very nice people, and actually they, they have a center, uh, React Therapy Center in Cincinnati. So it's not too far away from us either. So he worked very hard and continue uh, to make the React Therapy continue to spread out the world. Okay, so um, so this is pretty much the the story about William Glasser. Okay, so hopefully hopefully you like it. Okay, so if you didn't get a chance to, to see clear uh, the PowerPoint, for those of my students, you will have a PowerPoint in your uh, Moodle. And then <clears throat> you can also, since this is in YouTube video, you can just go back and then see and check one more time. Okay, so then you can read just another good story about how a psychiatrist and psychologist they work through their life to create theory and to help in the people they meet okay so it's in very inspiration right okay so i'll stop here and i'll see you next time and hopefully you stay healthy and stay safe okay bye bye